Good morning, everybody. We're going to start off um, for our call to worship. We're going to sing 143, and it's on eagle's wings. It's really simple, and we're going to sing it three times through. And you might hear the men singing first, so. <laughs> so please stand and join us. you to shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of God's hand and God will raise you up on eagle's wings bear you on the breath of dawn make you to shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of God's hand and God will raise you up on eagle's wings bear you on the breath of dawn make you to shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of God's hand Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. So we're having a few technical issues this morning. We are not live streaming today. Uh, we'll be posting it later on. It'll be recorded. Uh, so sorry about that. I'm sorry about running around last minute. I didn't get to shake anyone's hands and tell everyone it's great to see them. So it's great seeing you all. Consider it a personal handshake. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the wave. Uh, other announcements coming up. Let's see. Worship committee following uh, the morning worship. Uh, Brenda is at Fellowship Hall. Okay. Um, 4 p.m. finance, PPR, your meeting, 5 to 510, a quick admin council, and then 510 handbell. Uh, finance, PPR, and admin will meet in here because handbells will be being set up in the Fellowship Hall, okay? Um, doors, I think there's two doors still open. I'd have to check, but um, we're getting a lot of the doors decorated. That's awesome. Thank you all. Um, Harmony's birthday is October 4th, so if you see Harmony around, make sure uh, you wish her happy birthday. And Tuesday, we'll be praying here at the altar, Tuesday morning at 9 Bring your prayer requests and just an open heart to share with our Lord. Wednesday, in person and live at 5 Bible Study, we are going to be doing Acts chapter 22, Acts chapter 22, uh, youth Bible study, and uh, kids time with Glenda is also going on. Uh, we're starting to get a lot more kids in there. Bring them. It's a great time. Hi. Who's <laughs> Hi. Uh, Friday, uh, homecoming parade for it, okay? So that means there's going to be cars and floats all over this area. Um, come out, support the school. It's a great time. There will be no game night this Friday, right, Betty? Or is it? Huh? Oh. Okay. I don't know. Rhonda, do you know anything? Oh, thought everybody was going to the homecoming, so. Okay. All right, so there is a game night for those that are not doing the homecoming stuff. All right, uh, what else we got? 
October 10th, uh, church at the lake, which means there will not be Sunday school that morning, all right? Um, we will need able-bodied people to, what, get chairs, tables, all that stuff down there? Steve, yes, Steve's voice that, I mean, I saw him say it, but it came from over there, said, yes, we will need people. <laughs> and Brenda now has the mic. <laughs> The fishing tournament on the 9th, yeah, at 8.30 um, at Donald's. He has a, a catfish pond there. Did I miss any other announcements? I think we, uh, Milton, we have one up front. He's coming to you, Gene. The uh, flower arrangement that's on the organ there is placed in the church by my sister Betty Peacock in memory of Kirby Peacock and Kevin Peacock. Uh, we appreciate, you know, your prayers and support at, at that time, and uh, we thank uh, Betty for the flowers. Are there any other announcements out there? All right, then. Praise team. Let's, we're going to um, do our hymn of praise, My Faith Looks Up to Thee, number 452. Please stand and join us. of faith. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, praise team, and thank you, Janice, for your wonderful playing. Uh, as we move into our time of praises and prayer requests. Are there any praises and prayer requests out there today? They're coming up to you. The first, the family of Justin Perkins. Justin Perkins. Uh, yeah, that he passed okay. away yesterday. Uh, we know that family's had multiple deaths over the past couple of years. Okay. Uh, and second, uh, we've got local guardsmen, including my son, that are headed to the southern border. Uh, pray for those guys and what they're going to have to deal with on that border. Okay. Uh, pray for Teresa Wright. Teresa A lot of people Wright. Knows her as okay. Johnson uh, was married. Uh, she's in the hospital in Tallahassee. All right. Sally Gable, she fell this morning and is on the way to ER to see if she broke her arm. Sally Gable, okay. Marissa. Was this your note here for me? <laughs> so John Watson and Marissa Hatton. Tim Williams, he's been diagnosed with cancer, and he starts chemo and radiation this week. And also uh, the family of Miss Betty Richardson, Dr. Richardson's widow. Okay. Family of Betty Richardson. Okay. Wanda, Wanda Crawford. there any others? All right. Let's uh, come together and pray to the Lord our Father. Dear Heavenly Father, this morning we come to you seeking your comfort, your healing, your peace. We lift up to you our family, our friends, our neighbors. We ask that your glory shines brightly in all their lives. Lord, we ask you to protect our guardsmen as they head down to the border. Keep them safe. Help them to do the job that is set before them. Lord, we lift up to you the family of Justin Perkins, the family of Betty Richardson. We lift up Teresa Wright, and Sally Gable, Tim Williams, and Wanda Crawford. We pray for John Watson, Marissa Hatton. We lift up Eileen Kane and Rhonda Clayton, Susie Coombs and Francis Dudley, Terry Dudley, Jeannie Early, Jean Edwards, Lynn Ellenberg, Penn Gopal, 
Weston Linton, Dr. Hayes McKay, Barbara Matthews, Dr. Melzer, Barbara Nelson, and Tommy Orshell. Lord, we also lift up to you our shut-ins, Barbara McIntosh and Bonnie Shackleford. Be with them, comfort them, bring peace to them all, Lord. We ask for your healing and to heal this nation of ours, Lord. We pray for our leaders that they make godly decisions, that they focus on you first and foremost, Lord. In your name and in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we ask these things. Amen. Our uh, Old Testament reading, which was in my notes, but Rhonda has it right, scripture reading. Because 1 John, I've learned this in seminary, is not in the Old Testament. Um, it took seminary to do that, really. But uh, our Old Testament reading is 1 John from 3, verses 1 through 3. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. This one came to mind because I needed a little encouragement this week, a little reminder of just how wonderful our God is, a God that gave us his son so that we may live. What a sacrifice. I had a thought just now, and it just left me. I definitely needed more coffee this morning. Um, off for our offering, um, again, I want to thank you all. I have to look to where the plates are. Um, for your giving, the things that we are able to do, the outreach to the high school, helping to support the softball team, the volleyball team, hopefully the football team, um, and the other things that are going on in this community. It is through your continued giving that we are able to get out into this community and share how much we love Jesus, to share his light with all these people. And I want to thank you all for that. Please pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for this opportunity to bring to you our tithes and offerings joyfully and in obedience, showing our love for your ministry, Lord. I ask that you help us all to join you in your ministry. Amen. Are you singing a solo, Steve? <laughs> you want to leave Paul do it all by himself? <laughs> Let us break bread together on our knees, on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees, on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, oh Lord, have mercy on me. Let us drink wine together on our knees, on our knees. Let us drink wine together on our knees, on our 
knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O Lord, have mercy on me. Let us praise God together on our knees, on our knees. Let us praise God together on our knees, on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O Lord, have mercy on me. Let us pray, God, together on our knees, on our knees. Let us praise God together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O Lord, have mercy if you please, if you please. (sighs) Did you know that was... (laughs) Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Back on. Now, for our children's message, a little different today, because little ones always miss out on communion. And so I want to teach them a little bit about communion. Well, hello. I know. It's pretty neat, isn't it, up here? See, if I have food, now she's willing to come close to me. See this? (laughs) I know the trick now. I got to bring snacks. (laughs) So you guys know, like, when uh, we do communion here in the big person's church, do you know what communion is about? You do? Is it about Jesus? Yes, good answer. Yeah. It is about Jesus because, see, Jesus got his close friends together, and he said, look, I'm going to show you this so you can help remember what it was like, what, who I was, what I did for you, because he died, right, to save us. And this communion represents that. See, Jesus when he gathered all the disciples together, he took the bread and he broke it. And he told them, he goes, this is my body. Eat this in remembrance of me, to to remember how Jesus died on the cross for us, right? And it nourishes us. And then, is it jelly? No, it's juice, okay? And then he took a cup with that juice And he said, drink this and remember how I died on that cross for your sins. Isn't that pretty neat that he did all that for us? So do you guys want to try to do communion? Yeah? Okay. So grab one of the little wafers. And then you can eat the wafer. And then you take a juice. Okay. There's one. And then and then you get to drink the juice. There you go. We already had some. She already had some? Okay. That's all right. You can have it. 
in there, Carter. Okay, so you eat your wafer and drink your juice, and you say a little prayer going, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. Okay? What do you guys think of that? She's trying real hard. Is it good? Yeah? So we'll keep practicing communion because it's going to take a little bit, isn't it? Okay, drink all your juice up. Did you guys drink it all up? Huh? Like this? And it's all gone. Oh, okay. And then when you're all done, you put your cups back in here. Very good. Oh, you're, she's sharing with me. She poured her leftover juice in my cup. Yeah, if only if you all could see this stuff from my perspective sometimes. Huh? You don't want to drink the juice? You don't like that one? You like blue juice better? What color? Oh, huh? Here? Yeah? No? Okay. You're all done? She's on her third now. It's a good thing we're not doing the traditional wine, huh? <laughs> You're all done? Okay, put it on there. Yeah, yep, right in there, that's fine. Good job. All right. All right. Oh, we got it. So, oh, okay. <laughs> well, I, I, we lost him. Are you going to stay up here and pray with me? Okay, let's put our praying hands together. Thank you, dear Jesus, for these children. Help us to let them understand what it is when we do communion and about how important it is to do it and remember to understand your great and wonderful sacrifice, Lord. Watch over these children and protect them always. Amen. Thanks, buddy, for staying up here with me. What do you think? You're more concerned about the, the toy box? Yeah. All right. Anybody want their leftovers? No? <laughs> I didn't think so. That was pretty precious, y'all. <laughs> well, we're going to sing Be Thou My Vision now, 451. Let's just prepare our hearts. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, say that thou art. Thou my best thought by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, thy presence my light. Be thou my wisdom and thou my true word. I ever with thee and thou with me, Lord. Thou and thou only first in my heart. Great God of heaven, my treasure thou art. Great God of heaven, my victory won. May I reach heaven's joys, O oh, bright heaven's sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O oh, ruler of all. Thank you, praise team. Our sermon today, if you look in your bulletins, is called Got Faith. And yes, I did steal that from the old saying, Got Milk. I remember those t-shirts quite fondly. Um, it, because as I, as I thought about faith this week, um, it was really inspired like I said, from Great Is Thy Faithfulness, that song the praise team uh, sang to us last week. 
and it was it was interesting as the week unfolded because more and more I kept encountering lessons from my college professors, stuff on the internet, people's conversations about faith. So of course, you know, I figured, well, that's God because, you know, he's going to tell me five or six times before it gets through my head that this is what I'm supposed to talk about. Um, it's just it's interesting as we think about what is actually involved in faith. But as I looked into the scriptures, as I went online thinking about different faith examples, this pastor posted a joke that's related to faith. And I really liked it. I'm probably not as good on the delivery as he was, but I will try. So he said, a wife woke up one morning and shook her husband and said, honey, I just had this amazing dream. You bought me a brand new gold necklace. What do you think it means? Well, the husband nodded and said, well, Valentine's is coming up pretty soon. Just wait and see. Well, a couple nights go by, and as she wakes up in the morning, she starts shaking her husband and said, I just dreamed. It's no longer a gold necklace, but an exquisite pearl necklace. What could this dream mean? And the husband said, well, Valentine's is on Tuesday. You'll know then. Well, Monday night, they go to bed. Sure enough, she has another dream. This time, with much excitement, she shakes her husband awake and says, I just dreamt that you gave me a beautiful, exquisite, wonderful, solid diamond necklace. What could it mean? He's like, honey, you'll know what it means tonight. I love you. And off to work he went. Well, when he came home, he had this beautifully beautiful, wrapped up box, nice bow on it, and he gives it to his wife, and you can see her eyes sparkling as she starts ripping into the packaging and opens it up and picks up a book titled, What Do Dreams Mean? <laughs> Did she get what she was asking for? She kept asking, what does it mean, right? Husband listened, I thought. But I was like, you know, that, that sort of, uh, that's faith in a nutshell, isn't it? The wife had faith that her husband would pick up on her hints. The husband had faith that the wife would understand when he gave her the gift. But it's not exactly what either of them probably pictured in the beginning. And sometimes that's about faith. Life doesn't always happen the way we want it to. But we still have to have faith. So as, as I thought more on faith, on what it means, on Monday, my professor started a lecture. And he was talking about these covenants, these promises in the Old Testament. And as he started giving examples of it, I lost track of what the professor was saying and turned to my notebook and started taking some notes because I, I was like, oh, this must be what God wants me to say. And pretty soon, I was totally lost in where he was in his lecture. But fortunately for me, it was a video, so I was able to rewind it and watch it again so I didn't miss anything. But these covenants really do talk about faith got faith? Do I have faith? How do I even have faith? Can I look at my life and see examples of my faith lived out? 
These questions kept popping into my head throughout the lecture, so you can see why I got distracted. But to me, I can have faith in someone I trust, right? I can have faith when I take and shake someone's hand and I can look into their eyes. I know if that person is trustworthy. That's how I judge trustworthiness, if I can have faith in someone. But can I shake God's hand? Can I look him in the eyes? No. So how do I have faith in God? Well, I'll tell you, I also have faith in people because of their past experiences. How have they treated me in the past? How have they treated others in the past? That says a lot about someone's character, doesn't it? So when I started thinking about God, how can I have faith in God? I thought about his track record. And then, unfortunately, I thought about my track record with him. Have I always been faithful to God? Has God always been faithful to me? After all, I pray for healing for people, but they're not healed. They're not, it's not the way I want it done. I pray for financial relief for my family, but I don't get the financial relief that I want it. I pray for all sorts of things that I want. But I think that's the problem with it. It takes us back to that opening joke. The wife was telling the husband what she wanted. But it doesn't always happen. It doesn't always work out the way we want. And that's what we have to understand. That this relationship, this faith, has two parts. You and God. You have to have faith in God as God also has faith in you. You have to be obedient to God, and then God fulfills his promises. A two-way street there. We have to consider that at all times. But this wife, she didn't. And she got that book of dreams, and that could lead into a whole new thing. Well, is she too materialistic? Is she too this or that? Which is a whole other sermon, so let me take that bus back around here and get back on faith. Don't know where I was going on that one. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> but as I thought about this idea of faith, what my faith is like, I thought back to that song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. And it occurred to me how deep this relationship goes, that faith is really between people, between me and God, between God and I. Have my actions since becoming a Christian helped to build faith? Does what I do lead God to think that I will be obedient to his promises? Or does he view it more as a toss of a coin? As this thought continued to blossom Monday in my head about what was going on, a shudder ran down my back as I thought about, wow, how does God view my obedience? We are in a relationship. So often, though, we look at this as one-sided, about our needs, our wants. We say, help me, God, in my ministry. But it's not my ministry. It's supposed to be his Faith is so much deeper than what we learn about in Sunday school. So as we try to figure out this relationship of faith, we have to really think about who God is. Because, I, like I said, I have not shaken his hand. I have not seen him eye to eye. But you know what? I know of stories. I know where to find people 
that have. I can pick up the Bible and look in here and see story after story that talks about God's relationship with humanity and how humanity responds. So as we start looking at this concept, we'll start at the beginning, Adam and Eve, but not in the garden. After they ate from the tree of knowledge. And in Genesis 2, we see an example of God and Adam and God and Eve and their promises. Genesis 2, verse 16, he says, I will make your pains and childbearing very severe with painful labor. You will give birth to children. With painful labor, you will give birth. Now, ladies, I'm not a lady, but if it's my understanding correctly, those last few months of pregnancy are not very comfortable, are they? No? And childbirth itself, although glorious, is not pain-free. So if we look at it, God's promise, because this is coming, he's making a promise after they have messed up, there's a consequence when you mess up, has been going on for thousands of years. So has God held true to his word? Yes. To Adam, he turns to Adam and says, cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground. Well, that's also true thousands of years ago. I know I keep looking around for this wonderful garden where everything is just done for me and I can just live in peace and joy and not ever have to lift a finger. But it's not here on this earth. What God said to Adam still holds true to this day. We're starting to see God's track record here. We get an understanding of how God views his relationship with us. See, God could simply have left and said, I'm done with Adam and Eve and start over. But he didn't. Because God is faithful to his creation. He is faithful to us. So instead, what did he do? He came up with a plan to bring us back so that we can one day walk hand in hand with him in a heavenly garden. That is how God views us. That is how God keeps his promises to us. Because God sees in us something we seldom ever see in ourselves. It says in scripture that God created us in his own image. That's what God sees in us. He sees our potential, our hope. He sees who we can be, which we often miss. In Genesis 6, we continue to look at these covenants and promises God in Genesis 6 has seen how bad humanity has gotten. That people are living in wickedness. That the world is corrupt. But in that world, he does see a righteous man. And he goes to Noah and says, I'll make you a deal. You and your family will live. But you have to build an ark because I'm going to flood the world. Well, we know that story, don't we? God did flood the world. Noah was obedient. And then after the waters receded and Noah opened the doors and the animals went out, God then made a promise to Noah and all his descendants. And he blessed that promise with a sign. He 
He said that when you see this rainbow, you will remember that promise that I will never, ever flood the entire earth again. So although we were not there next to Noah, we can see part of God's promise. We have seen rainbows, God's creation. So we can have faith in that, right? We're starting to see how God keeps his word. We're also seeing how God responds when we are disobedient. So God is trustworthy. He is faithful. But the issue with this is these are all big names. Noah, Adam, Eve. Look at stories of Moses, Abraham, big names. What about us normal little people? Is God faithful to us? Does a guy like Mike, who's just Mike, is God faithful to him? So I started looking to see if there's guys like me in the Bible. And I found one in Genesis 24. In fact, this person's not even named, just calls him a servant. It says in Genesis 24, starting in verse 12, Then he prayed, Lord, God of my master Abraham, make me successful today and show kindness to my master Abraham. See, I am standing beside this spring, and the daughters of the townspeople are coming out to draw water. May it be that when I say to a young woman, please let down your jar that I may have a drink, and she says, drink, and I'll water your camels too. Let her be the one you have chosen for your servant Isaac. By this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. You see, this servant was sent out by Abraham to find a bride for Abraham's son. And this servant prayed to God. And what's wonderful about this scripture too, God answered the prayer before he had finished praying. Because the scriptures say, while he was praying, Rebecca came out of the town with a jar on her shoulder. So while he was still in prayer, the prayer was already being answered. Just a servant, a regular Joe, the same as everybody. And God was faithful to him. So it doesn't matter if it's a big name or a little name. God hears and is faithful to all of his children. As we walk through the Bible, we find account after account of stories like these that show every time how God always holds up his end of the deal. And we see in that his desire for us to be in relationship with him. He will do anything and everything to reach out and bring you into his loving embrace. God did not promise us an easy life, did he? It is tough. But we do see that when we are obedient, when we follow his teachings, that we are truly his children, that we can have faith in him just as he has faith in us. This idea of this relationship, of being able to be with God in a faithful relationship is a key point. We have to understand that it is a relationship. So often people complain and talk about how, you know, I don't have the faith. But remember, God has faith in you. He has shown again and again and again how much he loves you. Think about the relationship 
that it talks about in the Bible between father and child. How much faith do you have in your father? How much love does your father have for you? And that you can trust. So you may not be able to go up and shake his hand. You may not be able to look him in the eye. But his references, his experience, it is trustworthy. It is true. And in that, our faith is grounded. And that, we have the strength to be faithful at all times. Because we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is here and with us. We can feel his presence descend on this church. We know him as our father. And we will do whatever we can to be that child of his, won't we? That is what faith is about. That is how you know if you have faith, when you desire God like that. Now, as a communion team comes up, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst in my sight. Angels descending bring from above Echoes of mercy, whispers of love This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long This is my story, this is my song Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Please receive this benediction. Dearest Heavenly Father, guide and direct us always. Protect our church as we step outside these doors and into the world. Let us not bow to temptation. Give us the strength to resist evil, Lord. And let us be your servants, witnessing and carrying your light forward. In your great and glorious name, amen. Amen.